it is Dave. It is Duncan back from Metal Epidemic for another album review. For this review, Duncan and I have been checking out the new release from New Jersey death metal quintet, Cognitive. The band's new album, Abhorrence, will be released on May 17th via Metal Blade Records. Abhorrence is how I describe your power. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Thank you. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. Uh, so, album number five from Cognitive. Uh, three years after pounding us to dust with malevolent thoughts of a hastened <laughs> extinction. We're just going to like, oh, <laughs> three years after pounding you. <laughs> like, I still kind of walk right. <laughs> Uh, Cognitive started work on Abhorrence while touring Malevolent Thoughts, sending tracks back and forth to each other while trekking from one intense gig to another. While we were on tour, we started writing the record. There were riffs and ideas that didn't make Malevolent Thoughts. We just kept toiling away with it, and then we recorded the Rot Eternal single in between touring, so it's just been non-stop writing. Uh, Drummer AJ Viana has his own studio, uh, he has previously worked with uh, bands as prestigious as Hath, and he recorded, tracked, and mixed the album before Ryan Williams, uh, who's also worked with the Black Dahlia Murder, um, he mastered it um, at uh, Metal Blade. Ryan Williams at Metal Blade, oh, right, okay. Um, Viana would send mixes to Williams, and they honed them in the mastering process. To the album's immense benefit, it was a collaborative process, and everyone brought their A game. Um, our lyrics for this record are all over the place, says Rob Wharton. Uh, there's some stuff about video games and addiction and mental health. Uh, to me, that's the kind of subject matter that hits home because everyone's got stuff going on in their lives and life ain't easy. So to me, when we have those layers, it's relatable. Uh, the album title certainly is. Many people will have looked at the state of the world in recent years and felt abhorrence is an entirely appropriate word. Uh, we were going through all the song titles and wondering which is the strongest song, Rob says. Uh, we decided to go with Abhorrence because everything's disgusting anymore. Everyone's so mean and cruel to each other and the world is terrible. We just feel like it kind of encompassed everything. We had put a lot of time into that one specifically because there are so many repeating parts, but it was mostly about depression, anxiety attacks and mental health. Abhorrence may provide therapeutic commentary about how messed up the world currently is, but also, ironically, provides a breath of fresh air. So, uh, Duncan, we... I just realised that I underpinned exactly their sentiments in a PR statement by insulting your power. Uh, I <laughs> wish to take that back, Dave. Oh, your really? power is fine. <laughs> I'll take that. Fine um, is all you're getting. Baseline. <laughs> passable. Or manageable. Fine. And small doses. If you could do like a little eye, eyebrow raise when you say fine, that would be even better. Oh, I am saying you're a part of fine. Fine. Yeah, that's better. That's better. Um, so, uh, we loved the previous cognitive release. I mean, loved um, is a strong word. What was the scores? Five. Uh, that's the yeah. That's yeah. <laughs> the, like if, yeah, five is defined as loved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah we loved it. Yeah, yeah. Um, people like that. Um, and. Uh, yeah, I was I was very excited about that album. Um, I think it was it was the first kind of listen I'd had to Cognitive, um, and I was just kind of blown away with what they'd done. Okay, like was. this band really has nowhere else to go now. Uh, yeah, <laughs> smashed <laughs> up against that glass ceiling. Um, if they just keep doing this album over and over again, I'll be happy. Yeah, and I was I was kind of in that kind of mind frame of like. How like what a band have hit like a high point like that? Yeah. Like how what do they do? How do they take it to that next level? Like how do they outdo such a monumental release without just repeating themselves? Mm. Well, Duncan, <laughs> they do this. <laughs> they release an album like Abhorrence. Yes. Yes, they, they do. Um, <laughs> fuck me. Like just <laughs> well, you put like that. I mean, flip me over. Sounded like you sighed when you were doing it. So I don't know if your heart said it, but I'll write give me a pound and Duncan. <laughs> this is <laughs> this is this is a dog. This is a flex. Well, let's let's, let's peek behind the curtain here. Oh, I'm not dressed. Right, uh, <laughs> let's peek behind the curtain here. 
I had still I I listened to all the other albums we're reviewing in this time frame. Once again, please mm. like look at the t-shirts that gives you a context of what we recorded in bulk. Um, and it wasn't that I was avoiding cognitive. It's just I knew cognitive was the band that I'd fucking shelled it five to before. So I knew it was going to be good. So I kind of was like, that's a known quantity. Look yeah. at all these unknown quantities here. So I'm going to focus on those. I even got through the second album and I got a WhatsApp message from you mm. with a question. You posed a r- riddle me this, Duncan McLeish. Yeah. If we've already given Cognitive five stars <laughs> yeah. on the previous album and the new album's better, what do we give it? <laughs> and I was like, five stars, Dave. Like, That's the maximum screw you do. But you'll have to caveat it and say it's five stars, but it's better than the previous album. Mm. Some reviewers get fickle about not wanting to give out the maximum marks. They want to give below the maximum marks because they don't think a band should ever achieve maximum marks because there always should be room for improvement. Mm. Fuck that. That's a lazy guys. way of reviewing, right? It's being a it's been like unneedlessly dismissive to bands that achieve greatness. I think you can, a band can have more than one five star album. Yeah. I just don't think they can have two five star albums that sound the same. Mm. Right? And Cognitive, I think, fall in the category of a band that continue to almost carve out what they define as their sound mm. and kind of. <clears throat> You say a flex, it is kind of flexing, but at the same time, I think it's it's moving the goalposts. You know what I mean? If this was what a five-star album was a couple of years ago, things move on, and it's now here now. And oh, by the way, we're here as well. So mm. not that I want to grossly give away our scores. I think you know where we're landing on this one just from the intro. But to me, we had a chance to chat to Rob from the band recently in an interview. Yeah. I don't know if you like those things or you like have liked it. Killed. We had a chance to chat to him and it may feel like we're blowing smoke up his ass. I don't know if Rob's into that. Um, <laughs> about how much we enjoyed it, but I cannot stress that at, at the end of the first listen, I was kind of just going like that. <laughs> it's just like, yep. it's better. Like, like, and to me, it's not just like a, like, if this was a flight of stairs, this isn't just the next step up. <laughs> this is like maybe one or two steps up. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? It feels like a band that are like, like continually raising their game, mm. regardless whether we as consumers and music lovers need it. Yeah. And when he said to me, I write music for me, I write mm. the stuff that makes me happy, yeah. which all musicians do really, unless you're Creed. Um, <laughs> all musicians write like for themselves. Um, I kind of think I kind of think that they themselves I, I, when Rob said if no one listened to them they'd be fine with that I kind of mm. I kind of believe that mm. but I also think if no one listened to them they'd be fucking idiots so <laughs> let me just put that out there yeah. uh, so I'm stealing your thunder so right. Dave what was it about this album on your first listen that compelled you to one lift your phone Two open WhatsApp <laughs> and three send me a message just being like, uh, <laughs> Duncan. Yeah. Like, I, I think that there are albums that you hit play on and you'll finish it and you think to yourself, that was cool. I'll come back to this in a few days and give that another listen. When I finished Abhorrence, I couldn't wait to play it again. Th- th- this was so fucking addictive. I am. Um, Hashtag obsessed with this album. Um, they've somehow made this more more punishing, more relentless, and yet more memorable than yeah. malevolent thoughts. Um, the hooks on for a death metal album, the hooks on this are fucking outrageous. It's only been three years since the last album, but the level of songwriting has jumped up massively since the last release. It's still it's still got that like that technicality to it that you like you can't help but be completely in awe of but at the same time they've kind of refined and stripped back certain aspects to leave more of an impression of you know the track that you've just heard and like when when i first like started listening it's my first listen i was like the fucking balls on these guys (laughs) oh fucking balls to, (laughs) to open up an album with a track like abhorrence like i feel like when i listened to that i was like 
most bands, like at this point, I didn't know what was coming in the rest of the album. I was like, most bands would keep a track like this till later in the album, like to break up maybe the, I'm thinking like break up the intensity, you know I mean? Cognitive have, have went balls deep on track one. Like this is, it's not only fucking pummeling, um, but it's loaded with these big, huge, like tonal vocals. Um, that kind of, I think Rob described it as kind of like dirty melody. Um, and yeah, we spoke about this a little bit last night, but the internet obviously does obviously think there's a bit of a, there's an air of like cattle decap about it, you know what I mean? Um, but what I'd also say is Shane has a different kind of timber to his voice than, than yes. Travis Ryan. So oh, 100%. Like, when I heard that, I, w- I wasn't like, oh, like he's just trying to emulate Travis. Like I didn't think that at all. I just felt like this is his own take on a kind of, tonal kind of melody and it's fucking awesome like and on track one i was like whoa this is fucking they're coming out of the gate swinging on this um it's it's not the you know the only track to have a bit of variance on it is what either like the the uh the, the vocals are are kind of those kind of tonal vocals are kind of scattered throughout the album um there's there's more kind of tonal work on uh, like a packed unholy for example which again just like lifts the chorus and gives it this feeling of kind of grandeur um, there's some really cool, like, uh, kind of blackened uh, guitar work on that track as well, which gives it, you know, a slightly different slant. But again, vocally, Shane can also do those kind of like more blackened, that blackened register really well. So it's perfectly paired on the track. I think for me, I felt like this was Shane's kind of finest moment. Um, I think, like, releases wise, this is the best he's ever sounded. He has elevated his technique massively. Um, and with those additional sounds and tones on this, I think it gives the, the vocal element of this album such a huge boost. Um, tracks like A Pact Unholy or Savor the Suffering have some of the most disgusting vocals I've heard on a death metal <laughs> album in a long time. Um, it's ridiculous, but I think adding in those little little moments of, of clean and kind of tonal stuff on certain tracks also makes like the guttural stuff sound even more deadly on this release. Um, musically though, man, this is like, this is chef's kiss. Like it's, it's got all the power, all the precision of malevolent thoughts, but they've put even more focus on what it would kind of take to make, or yeah, how even more focus on what it would take to make this new material, um, you know, superior or take it to the next level. Just getting that perfect kind of assortment of ingredients and knowing when it's balanced just right. You know, there's there's nothing here that feels like they've went too far or like on the flip side of that, you know, there's nothing here that feels like undercooked. They know how to deliver the payoff um, and this album doesn't disappoint in that area. Every track, I mentioned this on our interview, every track has a moment where I was just, yeah. you'd shout out, fuck yes, that's fucking awesome. Um, and the thing is, it's not even like all of them are heavy moments. Um, one of my favourite moments um, on the album is um, on As The Light Fades um, and there's a it's, it kind of sits in the middle of the album um, and it's a, the kind of second half of the track there's a really cool almost kind of clean kind of build up on the guitars um, that leads into this big guitar show there's kind of two guitar leads come in um, and it's absolutely stunning like a real kind of uplifting moment on the album that on an album that really just continually pounds your head in um, and I mentioned this to Rob, like I, I, I don't think I've ever had goosebumps from a guitar solo before ever. Like, and I heard um, as the light like, fades, and I was just like, this is fucking incredible. Um, and it's perfectly placed, you know, as you know, track five in the album, um, where you you get that kind of lighter moment before the the second half of the album kicks in. And um, like we spoke to Rob about the track, and you know, he was telling us about the kind of lyrical theme that, that Shane was using for the the track, and it's. It made made total sense. Like it's a very kind of special moment on the album, uh, which I absolutely loved. And it just like the album just continues to impress. Uh, there's more big, you know, huge vocals on Containment Breach. Uh, the drumming on Rorschach is just ridiculous. Uh, I was like totally kind of honed into his playing on this. Like there's like his blast beats are not just like he's a standard blast. He's doing like little yeah. patterns and stuff, and yeah, the blasts yeah. are really <laughs> cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, the footwork is incredible, precision, and just like his playing across the album, um, AJ is just on fire on this. He, he never misses a single beat on this one. Um, he's an absolute beast of a drummer. We found out last night as well, I don't want to give the whole interview away, but he also 
writes guitar parts as well, which I was like... Which is just, I mean, be good at one. Yeah. Right? <laughs> like, he's drumming, I mean, he's guitaring, he's producing the album. Like, what the fuck? Um, the ending of uh, Lunar Psychopathy... Uh, psych- psychopathy? Psychopathy? Yeah, psychopathy. Um, yeah. I couldn't get out there. Um, that ending just about ended me, to be honest. Um, like, every riff just gets even more and more annihilating as it comes to a close. Um, and then the closing track, Cold Dead Hands, I liked, I liked the fact that they, they like, but they didn't go experimental, they didn't go like long-winded, it mm. just it closes things out in a devastating fashion. Um, there is a really kind of underlying nightmarish feeling in the, the lead work, which kind of intensifies the track. Um, and to me, it, it kind of gave it that feeling of an album finale, um, which I really enjoyed. And as I said, when it finished, I was like, I just need to play this again yeah. and again. It's so Moorish. Um, this is for me the best thing that Cognitive have done. Um, it's everything they've done and so much more. Like the fine tuning, the, ref- the, the, the detail in the songwriting, it's just, it's so good um, and crushing. Like talk about heavy, this album, it makes me want to lift weights. You know what I mean? It's like, it's just one of those this gets you completely amped this album when you hear it it's so good man um and like production wise i think aj is absolutely knocked out of the park it's it's like sonically face melting um i i played it i played it in the car at unacceptable volumes and <laughs> it's, it sounded absolutely punishing like at high volume this sounds incredible um it's, it's everything you'd want in a death metal album and a little bit more um yeah Fantastic job, guys. Like, you absolutely crushed it with this one. Uh, anything you want to add on to that? Um, just, I'd, like, continue doing what you're doing. Like, I think the the genius of Cognitive is that they do all the technical death metal switch-ups, but with none of that fucking eye-rolling wankery that puts me <laughs> off. Yeah. You know, like, yep. they're really, really good at switching. Like, they, they know exactly when a riff is played to its fullest, they know exactly how to switch it up and what they switch it to is always a smarter version of what I want to hear. Whether it's, um, you know, like maybe not taking the guitar too far away from what they just played, but mixing up the rhythm section mm. or like keeping the rhythm section not too far away from it and completely switching up what the guitar's doing. The variety of vocal techniques on this also is just is the best the vocals I've ever seen. The guitar riffs are the best the band have ever written. Yeah. The drum work is the best the band has ever done. And the production is the best they've ever had. So that's how you get a better than a five star from the previous album. <laughs> yeah, it's like as a debut album on a new record label, on a bigger record yeah. label, this is how you fucking it's do it. It's a statement, it. really. It's a total statement. Um, and if you're Metal Blade right now, you should be sitting there going that shit. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. This is this is how you. The, should, the, yeah. this, uh, almost Cognitive's coming out party on album number five, like to yeah. a bigger audience now. And <laughs> um, I, I would like to think with that Metal Blade push behind them now, that audience is gonna. Yeah, I, I hope so. Like, I kind of feel like Metal Blade are almost like patting themselves in the back for this oh, one they've, like, yeah they've, they've, they've landed yeah. they've landed a marlin here you know what I mean like, <laughs> like, like they weren't expecting it but they've landed it yeah, um, yeah I, I cannot wait and, I mean he's ob- they've obviously teased maybe there might be a, a wee UK visit somewhere in, in the foreseeable future potentially and mm. uh, we'll be there yeah. so fucking uh, awesome finally um, the scores what are we giving this dude <laughs> Oh, this is a tough one, Duncan. This is a tough one to score. I went back and forth on this one. <laughs> we, can, we can do point five, can't we? Um, <laughs> uh, I mean, like, how do you? I I couldn't even I couldn't criticize this. Like, I honestly couldn't. And um, Rob's an absolutely top guy. We spoke to him, as I said, just last night. Um, and I, I I feel like these guys are just about to kind of explode. Like, this is yeah. this is their moment now. I hope, like, with this label behind them. Um, they start to get out on some huge tours and just you know start to build that fan base even bigger. There's not a thing I'd change about this. Um, I want to listen to it again right now. So um, yeah, it's a five. Uh, if you hadn't guessed, it'll be from me, and I'm assuming it's five okay. for me. Uh, let's, <laughs> let's, let's, let's not draw this one out. Okay. Um, yeah, check this one out. Um, it's uh, it comes with a stamp of approval 
from myself and Duncan. High recommendation. Uh, it drops on May 17th on Metal Blade Records. Uh, links below to the band, to the band camp, all that sort of stuff. Check it out. Have a listen. See what you think. Um, and I hope you enjoy it. Um, that is the review. Much appreciated. Thanks for checking it out. Uh, we'll be back with another review very soon. But until then, take care. Speak to you soon. Bye, everyone. <laughs>